This video is brought to you by A-Main Hobbies. Click the links in the description below. Even though they aren't the premier classes of 10 skill RC racing, both two-wheel drive short course truck and two-wheel drive stadium truck are quite important in this hobby. Both are secondary classes that people tend to get into after they already have their two main classes of two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive buggy. However, very few people tend to run them both most of the time. Which one you should go for most of the time depends on your local track and what's run there more, but if you're in a position where both are run regularly at your local track, you lucky person you, in this video we'll briefly go over the history of each class and talk about which one you should go for if you're looking to get into a secondary class. Before we begin, I'd like to say two things. First, I'd like to thank A-Main Hobbies for supporting this channel. Anything you guys buy using the links below will directly support this channel as well. Secondly, if you're new here, feel free to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. With that out of the way, let's begin. Let's begin with the older of the two classes, Stadium Truck. Stadium trucks as we know them today can be traced back to the Tokyo Marui Big Bear, a truck that was lovingly christened as a Christmas toy by Gil Osi Jr. when their shop got a few back in the 80s. However, a lot of people really enjoyed them, enough in fact to the point in which they were willing to race them on their track, with a lot of mods by the way. After the monster truck class started to emerge and become more popular, both Losi and Team Associated would release their own conversion kits for their respective two-wheel drive buggy platforms. After this happened though, the demand for these new trucks became so high that Losi decided to release the conversion kit as a standalone kit, becoming the first modern stadium truck as we know it today in the form of the JRXT. Later on, we would have multiple different stadium trucks from all sorts of brands like Team Associated, Kyosho, and even Traxxas. Stadium trucks at one point were so popular that at many larger events they actually outnumbered two-wheel drive buggies they were based on in terms of number of entries. This is for a few reasons, many of which I'll get to later, but to keep it simple, they were considered a very good beginner class as they were much easier to drive than two-wheel drive buggies in which they were based. With all that being said, things can't last forever, and with the rise of another class I'll talk about later, stadium trucks began to go by the wayside, only being run at very large events. Very recently, however, stadium trucks have started to make a bit of a resurgence in the world of 10 scale RC racing. With that being said, why don't we take a look at what makes a stadium truck unique and the reasons why you'd want to buy one. One thing that you might have noticed right off the bat is the fact that compared to the two-wheel drive buggy in which it's based, the stadium truck is much wider. What this does is give the truck a whole lot of stability compared to the buggy in cornering, making the truck much more forgiving and easy to drive, at least initially. Another more obvious thing about the stadium truck is the tires. See, the difference between the tires on a stadium truck and the tires on a buggy can be linked to the difference between the tires on a truggy and the tires on an 8 scale buggy respectively. The tires on a stadium truck tend to last a bit longer and are usually higher in grip than their buggy counterparts. Another advantage that stadium trucks have is that because of all the things I mentioned previously, they're much easier to set up than most other RC cars out there. The footage you're seeing now is with my T6.4 with box stocks geometry the only thing I changed being the front shock oil. In hindsight, I probably could have done something with the rear shock oil to the ride height, but it's not like the truck was completely undrivable compared to the B6.4 was out of the box. With all that, why don't we get into the negatives, as few as they might be. First off, remember when I said that driving a stadium truck is easier most of the time compared to a buggy? Well, the key words to that would be most of the time. Even though you don't have to worry about rolling over as much as if you were to say run the car in the vacuum. Chances are you aren't going to be a perfect driver, and neither are the people you're going to be driving with. And because of the bigger wheels and tires, the effects of say clipping a pipe, or perhaps another racer's wheel and tire, is much more pronounced in stadium truck than they are in say buggy or short course truck. 
Another downside that the stadium truck class has as a whole is the price of said wheels and tires. Now this isn't a huge problem for the most part. However, stadium truck tires by and large do cost more money than buggy wheels and tires do, usually by a few bucks. And for those of us who are more budget minded and considering how many tires we tend to go through, this can add up over time. Granted, one benefit that stadium truck tires do have is the fact that they last longer, like I said before. The last main thing about stadium truck that irks me personally is the lifespan of the body, and how little it can end up being if you're like me and being a subpar driver most of the time. Especially those wings. God help you if you only have one. With that out of the way, let's go over short course truck. Now the history of the short course truck doesn't go nearly as far back as stadium trucks do. In fact, you only really have to go back to the late 2000s with Traxxas. Now Traxxas at this point in time hadn't been in the racing business for a very long time, if ever. However, they were in the business of making very popular RC cars that brought the RC hobby to the masses. One way they did this was emulating real life racing with very scale looking and scale acting RC cars and trucks. One day, they decided to emulate full-size stadium truck, or short course trucks as we come to know them, with a new truck in 2008 called the Slash. From the outset, and from a purely technical standpoint, the Slash was nothing special. Hell, some would say it wasn't good at all. Being that it was based on the Rushler stadium truck and Stampede two-wheel drive monster truck, both of which were antiquated in their designs already by the late 2000s. Not only that, but the truck was designed to roll and lean all over the place, like full-size short course truck, which is good for looks, but for performance, isn't ideal. That being said, the Slash, despite all of this, was a rugged and enjoyable RC truck that caught on like wildfire. Everyone and their dog bought a Slash from back in the day. From seasoned RC veterans, to complete newcomers, to big name YouTubers like Dude Perfect. After this huge boom in the popularity of the Slash, much like in the early days of people wanting to race the Tokyo Marui Big Bear, even though it wasn't set up for racing at all out of the box, People began racing their slashes on dedicated RC racing tracks and did everything in their power to make them work. Eventually, other companies, specifically in the US, began to realize just how big short course trucks had become and began developing and releasing their own versions like the Steam Associated SC10 and the HPI Blitz, both of which were more suited for racing on actual tracks. With that being said, the slash is still around today in many forms, with two-wheel drive brushed models all the way up to four-wheel drive brushless monsters. We'll get to the four-wheel drive world for both stadium truck and short course truck later, but I'm getting ahead of myself, so let's get back to the racing world. Like I said before, companies that made racing RC kits like Team Associated, TLR, and Kyosho began to realize that short course truck was becoming a very popular class in RC racing. So they decided to make their own versions of racing short course trucks that fell within the new, at the time, war guidelines for what a short course truck was, which we'll get back to later. Eventually, the Slash became an obsolete chassis in the racing world, only really being used in stock Slash classes like Mark Santa Maria's Country Ride series. Meanwhile, racing companies continued to innovate and push the boundaries of what could be done in the short course truck world, and that leads us to today with the main short course trucks being raced on the track being the Team Associated SC 6.4 and the X-Ray SCX, both of which are extremely good trucks that are capable of winning in the right hands. With the history out of the way, let's get into the characteristics of a short course truck and its benefits and drawbacks. The best way I can describe a tool drive short course truck would be a bloated buggy on thinner wheels in every sense of the word. If you put it next to a buggy of a larger scale, like this 8th scale nitro buggy, you can see that the 10th scale tool drive is an almost identical wheelbase compared to the 8th scale buggy. The same thing can be said about the wheels and tires too, as they are pretty much similar in terms of contact patch. One of the biggest positives though of short course truck racing as a whole is the fact that body contact with another racer isn't a complete death sentence for both drivers. The adage rubbing is racing really does apply to short course trucks in a way that no other class can really claim in the world of RC racing. This is entirely due to the fact that the wheels, unlike other RC racing classes, are enclosed so they don't get caught up the same way other classes do. This fact kind of lines itself to the mindset of a class that was made more just to have fun. Even though short course truck isn't taken as seriously as other classes in the US, that's kind of the charm of running short course truck as a whole. 
Unless you're at a national level event or someone really has a stick up their ass, you can get away with a little bit of rubbing here and there, and it's all in good fun for the most part. Another good thing about this particular class is the fact that the bodies are basically canvases for you to imprint your personality on. As you can see, I really like the color pink with flowers and on it and such. So if you like to get creative with your RC bodies or like to show off your artistic skills with an airbrush, Short Course Truck would be a perfect class for you. Unfortunately, we have to get into the negatives now. First off, there's the question of how these things actually drive compared to other RC classes out there. Even though there have been leaps and bounds in terms of designing a short course truck that works well on modern tracks, there are certain limitations that really can't be avoided when you have to make a car within the short course truck guidelines for Roar. Out of the main four 10th scale RC classes in the United States, short course truck is probably the worst to drive in terms of how it feels on the track and how it reacts to inputs. Even the best driving, most well set up for a track short course truck you can drive will probably be slower and drive worse than a decently well set up buggy or stadium truck on the same track. It simply is the nature of how short course trucks are built and it can't be completely avoided. Speaking of things that can't be avoided, we have the problem of the short course truck body. Now they may look good and allow for real rubbing as racing type situations, they have one glaring weakness that without modifying them heavily, can't be avoided, and that's their parachuting event. Because the body is so large, it actually catches a lot of air on the way down from a large jump, all the parachute name of the effect. This, what this basically means is that you really need to change how you take jumps as a whole. This is something I personally haven't figured out yet, and to be completely honest, I probably will never will, as I probably won't be running a short course truck for a little while. The last main issue that short course truck has surprisingly is popularity. In the United States, both stadium truck and short course truck are considered tertiary classes, classes that kind of take a back seat to buggy classes. However, they are still run with some level of frequency here in the United States. Europe on the other end is a completely different story. Both stadium truck and short course truck are not as popular across the pond or upside down. However, short course truck as a whole is pretty much dead in Europe and to my knowledge considering everyone I've asked on the matter. So, if you live either across the pond, upside down, or where the sun rises, chances are the decision has already been made for you. Now, if you were to ask me which class you should go for if you're looking to expand your 10th skill fleet, my answer would coincide with whichever class has a more prevalent presence at your local track. However, for the purposes of this video, I'm going to assume that you're close enough to a track that regularly runs both stadium truck and short course truck with regular frequency. If you're looking to get into a class that's still very competitive and you want a more relevant driving experience under your belt, stadium truck is going to be the one for you. If you want a class that's a lot less competitive, allows for a little bit of body contact, and you like painting your bodies with intricate designs, Short Course Truck is probably for you. Before we close this video out though, there is a little bit of housekeeping I need to take care of. That being the four drive counterparts to these classes, specifically four drive Short Course Truck and four drive Stadium Truck, otherwise known as Mini Truggy. Both of these classes are sort of intertwined with both 10th and 8th scale racing. As a result, they don't really fit anywhere concisely in the RC racing world like other classes do. For proof, all you need to do is to look at the fact that during the 8th scale e-buggy nationals, they lumped in mini truggies and 8 4 drive short course truck in with 8th scale buggies and truggies. Even though at a macro level they aren't doing so well, at a micro slash club level, there are pockets of RC enthusiasts out there that really enjoy these classes and are willing to run them on whatever track will allow them. As for what you should choose, well, it again depends on where you happen to race. Both classes are capable of running on larger outdoor style tracks, both are domin dominated by Techno RC, and both are able to run indoors with relative ease. The only real advice I have on these classes is the same that I have for the two-wheel drive counterparts. Mini Truggy is more competitive, SCT is just for fun. And that's about it. Depending on how well this video does, I'll be doing another video on this sort of subject matter again in the future. So if you like this video, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel as well if you enjoyed it. Also, if you want to support me financially and want to keep these videos coming, be sure to check out my Patreon where I post updates and teasers as to when my next videos will be coming out. 
Speaking of which, I'd like to thank my patrons Mike Williams, RC World Discord server, Casey Nix, Ben Reeves, Dave Armstrong, Joe Jenkins, Morrison Wad, Rob Bedingfield, Caden Merckx, Ian Petrie, Keith McDonald, and my new patron, Spyro Hari. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.